And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of... The Diamonds of Death. A cat. Probably a tiger somewhere in the jungle. What a frightening man. Are you sure they won't attack our camp? The campfire alone is enough to keep them at a good distance. Don't worry, Sharon. You'll be safe. Listen. Yes, native drums. Somehow they they sound ominous. They only sound ominous if you believe them to be. The diamonds bring death. Just a wounded animal screening out. Oh, no. No, there was something else. Do you think the jungle has a voice for our Courtney? That is only for children to believe. In just a moment, the Hall of Fantasy will present The Diamonds of Death. And now for our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled, The Diamonds of Death. Vince Porter had just returned from a business trip to Caracas. He called me shortly after his plane landed and said that it was important that Sharon and I come over to his hotel that evening. I tried to get more information out of him, but had no success. At 8.30 that evening, we were in his apartment, and there began the story I am telling you. Good to see you, Vince. Glad to be back, Jeff. Sharon, you're looking lovelier than ever. Oh, always there with a compliment, Vince. Now, why don't you say nice things like that to me, Jeff? <laughs> I'm married to you, darling. <laughs> There's someone else here that I want you to meet. Well, you sounded so mysterious over the phone, I'd almost think you were guarding some great secret. Well, it's a secret, all right. I'm going to tell you what it's all about tonight. Oh, uh, these are the people I told you about, Carl. A pleasure. Sharon and Jeff. Courtney, Carl von Ornberg. How do you do? How do you do? Have you told them anything yet? No, sit down, kids. Make yourselves comfortable. Uh, now, what's it all about, Vince? Oh, show it to them, Carl. Yeah. What is it? It looks like a diamond, but it can't be. I've never seen a diamond that large. It not only looks like a diamond, it is one, Jeff. The largest diamond in the world. You're not trying to joke with us, are you, Vince? No, I'm not. Where did you get it? From a man I befriended in Caracas. He gave it to me. Well, that's worth a fortune. What would he want to give it to you for? He certainly could use it himself. Not where he is. What do you mean? The man who gave the diamond to Herr Porter is dead. Oh? Well, I hope you'll excuse me if I seem a little dense, but I'd appreciate hearing the story from beginning to end. All right, Jeff. I met this man. His name was George Maupate, a Frenchman, at the hotel in which I was staying in Caracas. He was a strange man, seemed to be afraid of his own shadow. One night, it was quite late... He knocked at my door. He asked me if I'd let him come inside for a while, that he had reason to believe his life was in danger. I couldn't refuse him, of course. That was the first time I saw the diamond. He said he'd been with a hunting party that had gone deep into the Belgian Congo and stumbled upon a strange race of white men who worshipped a huge stone idol on the bank of the Congo River near the equator. They made offerings to this idol, and the offerings were diamonds. His party waited until the ceremony was over. When the people had gone, they took all the diamonds they could carry with them and started back to civilization. But one by one, the men in his party died until he was the only survivor. He felt sure that he was being followed and took passage for Caracas. That was when he met me. Then what happened? Well, two days later, he again came to my room. Carl was there with me. He gave me the diamond, said I was to keep it for him. That if anything happened to him, it was mine to do with as he wished. Well, evidently something did happen to him. Yes, early the next morning they found him dead in his room. How had he died? No one knew. It was quite unusual. Three doctors examined him and not one of them could tell us how he died or what caused his death. George Mopate had just stopped living. And so you have the diamond? Yes, that's right. What are you going to do with it? Keep it and go into the Congo and look for these people he told me about. 
Won't it be dangerous? Yes, but I don't expect it to be too dangerous. We ought to be able to get back in one piece, eh, Carl? Yeah. And when we come back, we will bring with us as many diamonds as we can carry. Well, that's the reason you're going in. Yes. Why have you told us all this? Because I want you to go with us. What about it? I don't know. Think, Mr. Courtney. When we return, all of us will be millionaires. What do you think, Sharon? It's your decision, Jeff, not mine. Well, Mr. Courtney... I'll go with you. And then I'm going to. Oh, you'd better stay. Oh, no, I won't be any trouble, believe me. Vince, she can come with us. As long as she makes no trouble for us. No, don't worry. I can take care of myself. All right, then it's settled. I just thought of something. What? Well, this is going to cost a lot of money. Where's it coming from? From the diamond we already have. We are going to sell it. <laughs> I guess that takes care of all the answers. All of them. And it is agreed that we share in the diamonds equally, one quarter share for each. I like that. You bet you will. We'll leave as soon as we can get ourselves clear. Oh, it seems such a shame. Jeff. What's the matter? Look. Look at the diamonds. I don't see anything. It's shining so strangely. Before it was dull in color. But now look at it. Gleaming and shining as, as if there was something inside of it that was alive. Back now to our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled The Diamonds of Death. A month later, we took off from New York, bound for Dakar. There, we changed planes, and several hours later, found us in Leopoldville, where we bought a car and a truck and our provisions, hired three native men to come with us, and set out on the last leg of our trip. The roads were good for the first 500 miles, but eventually we were forced to abandon the car and truck and set out on foot. How much farther have we to go? About 250 kilometers. I've been noticing the natives we brought with us. They seem to be getting nervous and afraid. Yes, they've heard stories about the idol in the jungle and they're afraid of it. They say to go near it means misfortune. To steal from it means death. What's that? A cat. Probably a tiger somewhere in the jungle who has just found his dinner. Oh, frightens me. There's nothing to be afraid of, Sharon. We can protect ourselves. We have all the guns and ammunition we need. I was wondering, Vince, you don't think there's any danger of the natives taking off some night and heading back? I don't know. They don't know where we're heading, do they? No, but they do know it's in the general direction of the Stanley Falls. I think that's what's making them nervous. I should think the closer we get to the falls, the more apt they'll be to desert us. They will die if they try to desert us when we get close to the falls. I will see to that. Well, you mean you'd shoot them down? Not really, but I will say that to them if need be. They will think twice, then, before they try so foolish a thing. Elephant. Are you sure the animals won't attack our camp? The campfire alone is enough to keep them at a good distance. Don't worry, Sharon. You'll be safe. I hope so. Listen. Yes. Native drums. Somehow they... They sound ominous. They only sound ominous if you believe them to be. What's going on out there? Up there, wounded animal screaming out. Oh, no. No, there was something else. I heard it, too. A voice that spoke from the jungle. You're imagining it. I don't know. <laughs> Do you think the jungle has a voice, Herr Courtney? That is only for children to believe. We pushed ahead in the days that followed. The deeper into the jungle we went the more difficult was it for us to travel. And the drums, the jungle messenger who throbbed out before us that we were coming, coming to steal the diamonds from the idol. Now, according to the map, we should reach the river tomorrow. This is the spot the Frenchman said where we would find the idol. This is the end of our trail. We'll all be rich. But will we be alive to enjoy it? Of course we will. I'm beginning to wonder. The drums. Those are the same drums we've heard ever since we started into the jungle. They know we're coming. They're waiting for us. Do you notice that every time those drums start up, it seems to drive the animals mad? They're comparatively quiet until the drums start beating. They do seem to 
get angry when the drums begin. I say to you, the diamonds bring death. There it is again. There, what is it? The voice. Nonsense. You heard nothing but the animals and the drums. Oh, didn't anyone else hear it? I thought I heard something. I'm not sure. I think you're tired and nervous, Sharon. We all need a good night's sleep. In the morning, you'll feel a great deal better, I'm sure. Keep moving. Keep moving. They're going as fast as they can, Carl. They are afraid, and their fear makes their feet lag. Why don't you relax, Carl? We're almost there. Because I won't be satisfied. Look. The idol of the diamonds. Why, it must be a hundred feet tall. Standing up with its legs outspread, and its arms stretched forward as if it were waiting to greet us. There's something frightening about it. Look. Where? Over there. There's a man coming toward us. Put your gun down, Carl. What do the strangers want? We have come to see the idol. The idol has seen you, and you have seen it. You speak English? Yes. Some of your countrymen have stumbled upon our secret. From them we learned your talk. We come as friends. Friends? Of all those who have come here... None came as friends. They came to steal, to steal the diamonds from the idol. What's that noise? Time will teach you. You say you come as friends. If so, you will be treated as friends. If not, then the diamonds will be your death. Come, follow me. I shall take you to my village. I guess we're to spend the night here. Well, they seem friendly enough. Strange how they all disappeared when it became dark. The whole village seems to be deserted. What fools we are. Of course. This is the night of the full moon. This is the night they make the offerings to the idol. The village is deserted. Listen. I am going to see the ceremony. We'll all go. Do not make any noise, then. Come. All right, let's go. Be quiet. They must not hear us. They must not know we are watching them. They must be getting close. Yeah, we are. I can see something ahead. Yes, through the trees. The whole village is there. And look. Each man walks to the idol and sits at its feet. Diamonds. What's the matter? They've stopped chatting. Strangers, we know that you watch us. Step out into the clearing, but always remember that if you betray our trust, death will reach out and touch you, and the power of the diamond idol will destroy you, even as it has destroyed all others who have betrayed us. Strangers, Step out into the clearing! Back now to our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Diamonds of Death. We had followed the sound of the chanting and it brought us to the river bank and the clearing in which the idol stood white and tall, rising up into the sky. We thought they weren't aware of our presence, but we were wrong. Strangers, step out into the clearing. They know we're here. Let's do as he says. Right. Don't try anything, Carl. That is as far as you can come. Stop there. You have followed us, strangers. You say you are interested in the idol of diamonds? Then you may stay here. You may watch the ceremonial offering. Don't let go. Don't 
Carrying a diamond that places the idol's feet. No expression on their faces. Just walking towards the idol, as if they were hypnotized. And later, when the village is asleep, we shall return to this place. And when we leave, we shall take with us all the diamonds we can carry. Now I leave you. You will spend the rest of the night here. Thank you. Make no attempt to steal the diamonds, for the idol will raise up in wrath and bring the fury of the jungle down upon your heads. He will raise his voice in anger, and there will be no escape from him, for the fever of the curse will be upon you, and you shall die. They understand, Buddha. It is my hope that you do. May we meet again on the morrow. Well, let's go inside the hut. Hmm? What do you think, Miss? I don't know, Jim. He said if the diamonds are stolen, the idol will cry out in anger and death will be our reward. I believe him. So do I. I think they're right, Carl. I think we should leave here. Just the way we came. You think I came all this way so that I could turn around and go back to civilization empty-handed? You're mad if you think that. Think of George Mopate. Mopate died of a fever. That's what we thought he died of. But it wasn't caused by the jungle. It was caused by the power of the diamond idol. You are a superstitious fool. Quiet. Do you want the whole village down on our heads? All right. I say to you, we came here for diamonds. We leave here for diamonds. I'm not taking any. Get right. And I agree with him. <laughs> all right. Let it be that way, then. Perhaps it is better that way. For in the end, I would have been the only one left. What do you mean? That when we got near the edge of the jungle, I was going to kill you. Because I wanted them all, not just one fourth. But now you have said you want none of the diamonds. That means I own them all. And you will help me carry my diamonds back. You and the native forces we brought with us. That's where you're mistaken, Carl. We're not going to help you carry them back. Oh, but you are. He has a gun. And I will not hesitate to use it. You're a fool. You are the fools, not I. Now, my gun is ready to talk for me. The village is asleep now. We will go back to the clearing and get the diamonds. Move. I said move. Yes, that is correct. The native workers we brought with us are in the next hut. You will get them. Tell them that we are leaving. They will be more than glad to come with us. Now get your packs, and we shall go. We, we can't possibly carry any more diamonds. You are not carrying enough. It'll have to be enough, Carl. If the natives are loaded down, they can hardly walk. Our packs are just as heavy. We can't take any more. It is a shame to leave them here. But then, one can always return without his companions, of course. It's a long trail back, Van Arnberg. And you'll have to sleep sometime. We shall see about that. Now let us go. Move along! To think that you believe the story he told us. What fools you all are. Maybe. Maybe not. They do not even know that we have gone. The idol shall raise his voice in anger, and there will be no escape from him. Listen. They do know that we're gone, Carl. Then you must hurry. The first one who slows down shall answer to me. So the whole jungle is awake. Hurry! Move quicker! Start to run! traveling like this for two hours. You cannot rest. Even you're tired, Carl. We must rest or we won't be able to go on much longer. Oh, please. For your own good, too. If we don't rest along the way, we'll drop down in our tracks and we won't be able to carry the diamonds out for you. Stop then and rest. But do not try anything. Don't worry. We won't. We won't have to. Shut up. Vince. Yes? Haven't we been here before? 
They'll get you. This is the spot we were in when they discovered us watching the ceremony. Are you sure? Yes. Just ahead of us, there should be a clearing. The clearing in which the idol stands. We've been traveling in a circle. What did you say? We, uh, we can go on now. Then let us go. Uh, uh, Move along. Move. Yeah, you're right. The clearing is... Something is wrong. We have been here before. We are back in the clearing. We have traveled in a circle. I must get away. I must... The animal. It jumped out from behind the trees. You didn't have a chance. How horrible. Yes, it is horrible. But it was the death that he deserved. The didn't want to take the diamonds, Ruta. I know. When you came here, the thought was in your mind. But you were wise in that you pushed it away from you. What? What are you going to do with us? You and your party may leave this place in peace. And when you return to your world of civilization, it would be better if you did not tell them of what has occurred here. But there will be others... Even though you do not tell them, there will be others who come upon this place. Let us hope that they do as you have done. For if they steal from the diamond idol, death shall be visited upon them, and it may come in many forms. But it will come. Characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. <laughs>